Our gospel today is from the book of John, chapter 10. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I laid down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I laid down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. So before we get into my thoughts for today, I'd like to invite our, my friend Zira in to talk about our experience uh, with Pastor Ann's work uh, in going the extra mile. And as we were coming here today, we talked about my words and talked about my thoughts, and Zira really made the connection between what we're sustaining each other with today through the Word and how we've grown in faith through the work of the, going the extra mile. So Zira, would you like to come up and, and share with us? Praise the Lord. I'm so happy to see you. As the Bible says, iron sharpens irons. So when I see you, when I hear the voice, I was listening different voices coming when we were singing, and I feel my heart like uh, renewing my energy. So I'm so happy to be in front of you as my brother in Christ said about extra mile. We went to school of lay ministry because my husband, he wanted to know more the Bible because he was in a group of the people who were not allowed to read the Bible in his era. He was an old man. He died now one month ago. So he went extra mile. He was 93. But when we went there, he was 92 because we went to the school for two years with him. And uh, extra mile is extra mile. You have to write a big page always and send it to them and send it to them. So every time my husband was bending and writing and writing and he sent. So... The reason was to know more what is in the Bible. And for sure, when I was grieving this month, Holy Spirit said, don't stay in the house. Go and share what you received when you went to school. So Holy Spirit guided me as he said, the step of the righteous are ordered of him. He ordered me to one uh, family I'm coming from East Africa, Tanzania, and them, they are coming from Rwanda. So I went to that family. I get five people in that house. I mean, two, father and mother and three ki kids. And Holy Spirit start telling me to invest to them. So when every time we, we meet three times a week, we, I pray with them, I read whatever Holy Spirit put in me, I share with them, and then extra, I decided to have a, like Sunday school to the kids because I know how the kids are suffering nowadays. So I started putting the seed of the word of God in them. Today, I want to share with you that God loves us. That's why today I'm here. And I feel 
warmly welcome. This coat is not mine. I was shaking. <laughs> and first I said, no. He, he didn't tell me, but in her heart, he knew that I need warmness. So it's not just the physical warmness. I know you came here, the weather is not allowing you, but you came because you need spiritual warm. So thank you so much. And what I have today for you is a prayer. So I want to pray now for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to say thank you. You ordered my step. You knew that one day I'll be here from far, far, far away. It's a miracle for me to be here in front of these people who I don't know them. But I know in my spirit, I knew them because we come from one place, heaven, and one day we'll come to be with together with you, Jesus, as you said, you are going to prepare the place and you will come to pick us and you will be there forever. Lord, in the name of Jesus, as you said, iron sharpens the iron. I want to pray for everyone who feel not good. Maybe he's sick. Maybe he's feeling not warm in spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray that. Touch them now. I'm so happy to be with them because it's a miracle and you have a reason of everything. I'm here for reason. I bless them. I bless the pastor. I bless the family, individual. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and I believe. Amen. joyous. Uh, both Zira and I want to thank you for the opportunity to worship with you today. I'm here today as a student and a friend of Pastor Ann. I met your pastor through discussions we had as I was completing the assignments that Zira was talking to you about to become certified in biblical literacy. And it was a joy to do that, as you can hear. Before I get into my words, I do want to go off script and just let you know that as Zira is sharing with us today, this is sustainability. This is how I've come to become passionate about sustainability and caring for the earth, is by talking with others on the street, in the recycling center, uh, and a phone call and sharing how things are going outside of church outside of our activities at work. And it's through this connection that we make with each other that we can sustain each other in faith and then sustain each other in how we treat the earth and steward for the earth. So my thoughts today are guided by the spirit of our good friend Albert Vizina, the husband of Zira, who was called home Wednesday of Holy Week at the age of 93. Albert played jazz. He played the harpsichord, the accordion, through his earlier life. And then as he got older, he switched to organ. He lived with an infectious smile and a joie de vivre way of being. He was a wonderful person. Albert Zierne and I went the extra mile in our study of the Bible, and we all grew in faith through the experience. Our worship today presents the Gospel of John, but I've asked for the other lessons from today's lectionary to be included because when read together, they help provide a deeper connection for our gospel. The additional guidance will spread a range of emotions we all experience and the wonder that can, can emerge when reading all together with the excitement of a child. I encourage you to read all four lessons together and note your feelings from each reading and how your feelings bring you direction in the gospel. John's gospel announces, I have power to lay it down. I have power to pick it up again. Where is your power? How do you recognize power? And how do you sustain your power? In this, the fourth Sunday in Easter, Earth Day Sunday, I'm bringing the joy of the Easter's season's rebirth to all of us today. And Jesus, as the good shepherd, the good shepherd keeping watch, caring for the flock. My thoughts when reading this for the first time went to the Christmas pasture. 
a clear midnight blue sky, a sea sky of Mount Acadia in Maine, or maybe the big sky in Montana, our western skyline. A thousand stars came into my mind, Jesus watching, caring for us. The gospel then points to work that has to be done. I have other sheep that need to belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. A fold is a pen or a shelter for sheep. The work that the Good Shepherd is instructing to do is to bring other sheep into the shelter. It's through the work of bringing the other sheep into the shelter, into our fold, into our pen, that the Father knows me and I know the Father. Bringing others into the fold where protection is provided, our knowledge of the Father is promised. Bringing, protecting, knowing. This is a sustainable cycle for faith. How do we see sustaining the earth and sustaining each other as our shepherding love? As the love that God has shown for us through Christ, sustainability in our faith and in our environment takes more than a single lesson. Along with today's gospel are the other three lessons. In Acts, we hear of Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. In Psalm, in our Psalm, we read, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. In 1 John, we are instructed, as little children, let us love, not in words and speech, but in truth and action. And in John, we see that there are other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd, Today's lessons, when read together, provide four seasons of faith feelings. They can be heard to provide God's directions for us as we live through life's weather. As I read these lessons together, feelings of fear, aloneness, judgment, trial, strength, voice, confidence, comfort, oneness, care, and love emerged. The depths of our feelings are as complex as our connection to Earth Day. I can understand that not everyone is as passionate an earther as an Earth stir as I am, but today I am here to speak for the Earth, just like the Lorax. I wanted to get that in there somewhere. Right? <laughs> yes, but today. It's been a significant week. This week has seen calm brought to a stormy section in our currents of social change. The killing of George Floyd and the conviction of Derek Chauvin on Tuesday gave me a sense that we have seen one major case where justice was served correctly. Maybe many of you have felt a similar way that our country in this one case is moving in the right direction towards social justice, towards positive social change. But it's just one case. There's still much more work to do. One visual that I'm presenting today includes social justice as a one sphere, our economic justice as another sphere, and our environmental awareness and care for the earth as the third sphere. When looking at our lives through these three spheres, the one connection of those three spheres is sustainability. We need to be thinking about our social, our personal faith, our economic challenges, the way we live, and the way we treat the environment as these three different spheres. But when we bring them together, we can create sustainability of all three. This is a broad view, it's a broad systems view. And I want you to talk about that and how you see those three spheres as we think about today's lessons. The changes we are living in can show us that our past ways of living, traveling, consuming, and managing our lives and our natural resources is unsustainable. Our climate is warmer, 
our biodiversity is declining. Climate change is a fact supported by science. Multiple levels of the Earth's declining health are described by NASA as increasing global temperature, warming oceans, shrinking ice sheets, glacial retreat, decreased snow cover, sea levels rising, declining Arctic sea ice, increasing extreme events, and ocean acidification. The causes of climate change are complex, but the common element among global warming, these trends that have been occurring since the mid 20th century, is human activities. The good news is that over the past 12 months, work against the pandemic has shown us how we can create global change through using science, real-time data, and a global community working towards a common goal of improved personal health. This same approach is needed to address the world's environmental health. Recent research on changes in environmental health during COVID-19 lockdown presented at the Goddard Space Flight Center found that the environment is quickly changing and the timing of these changes seems to indicate that the pandemic may be a reason. Deforestation rates are changing in some places. Air pollution is diminishing. Water quality is improving. And snow is becoming more reflective in some areas since the pandemic began earlier this year. As a teacher at WPI and as a STEM teacher in public schools, I use these environmental challenges as a way students learn academic content combined with hands-on projects in developing a sustainable mindset. A sustainable mindset creates solutions grounded by a systems focus on the impacts of the environment. This past Earth Day, I initiated a discussion in our department to describe STEM disciplines as being guided in the following manner. Science for sustainability. We as, as, as managers must ask, how do we use and what is the best use of science in creating sustainable products or services that address business needs? Technology for teaming. Managers will ask, how are, who are the people involved in creating a sustainable solution? And how do we get them involved in addressing this business need? Engineering for environment. Managers will ask, how do we create a sustainable solution that is in balance with the natural world? And what is the life cycle plan and the impact on our world? And finally, maths, mathematics for measures. Managers will ask, how do we measure the environmental impact of all organizational activities in the production, use, and disposal of our products and services? We are in exciting times and we see innovation happening in the development and distribution of COVID vaccines. We see renewed broad-based and deepening concern for social and economic justice. And we see industry leaders becoming more vocal and active in addressing the economic, social, and environmental issues for sustainable change. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are all Earth's stewards. We are in a moment of time where concern for each other is as important as concern for the Earth. These concerns together create sustainability. I'm closing with the words of Robert Frost, but I am feeling the hope of Amanda Gorman in her reading of The Hill We Climb. Oh, give us pleasure in the flowers today, and give us not to think so far away. As the uncertain harvest keep us here, all simply in springing of the year. Oh, give us pleasure in orchard white, like nothing else by day, like ghosts by night. And make us happy in the happy bees that swarm delating round the perfect trees and make us happy in the darting bird that suddenly above the bees is heard the meteor that thrusts in the needle bill and off a blossom in midair stands still. 
For this is love, and nothing else is love, from which is it, it is reserved for God above, to sanctify to what end he will, but which only needs that we fulfill. Amen.